Today's topic, opening a Roth IRA for your child. Should you, should you not? I never heard of this, I can do this. Why did no one tell me this? Well, we're gonna cover a lot of that. This is a very popular topic as of late for a lot of our clients. And you know one of my favorite ways to produce content if we're seeing consistency in certain topics or questions, we're bringing it to you on YouTube. So this has been a topic that's come up a lot, not just this year, but in years past too, but opening Roth IRAs for our children, whether that's because you're the business owner and you wanna to start to pay your kids, which that's really the ultimate win, which we'll get into, or maybe they're just working as a babysitter or they're working over the summer as a lifeguard. Whatever the example would be, you should really have this Roth IRA as top of mind. Uh, and if they're under the age of 18, we're gonna be thinking in terms of more of minors in this. Uh, it's usually called a custodial Roth IRA. So sometimes you hear me call it that. A lot of times throughout the video, I'll probably just call it a regular Roth IRA. Just go with Roth IRA. But the goal of this video is going to be to walk through five big advantages of the Roth and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna transition into really things to keep in mind, both on the good side and the bad side, because there are a lot of ways that you could also mess this up. I think that's probably more uh, of the horror stories that you see out there, and we'll get into that. So opening a Roth IRA for our children, likely in this conversation, more geared towards minor, so under the age of 18, but stay tuned. That's all coming up next. All right, let's get started with some of the really appealing parts of why we'd wanna open up a Roth IRA for our children. And again, in the start of the video, think of it as they have earned income. That's the only key here. You have to have earned income to make contributions to a Roth IRA. This is because you were the business owner and you were now paying your child, or they just have a separate summer job and they're earning income. And even if that's like cash under the table, right? They're doing some babysitting, track it in a spreadsheet. You know, if they're doing some other side gigs, yard work around the neighborhood, good for them, right? Just make sure you're tracking all of this so that you have a good idea of what their actual earned income was in that current year. But regardless, let's just say, why do we even wanna do that? Why are we opening up a Roth IRA? So first and foremost, one of the unique things about a Roth IRA that some people don't know is contributions are always accessible. I usually don't give Susie Orman and the Dave Ramsey of the world many shout outs, but I will say one of my favorite things that Susie Orman has always said for a long time is for the younger generations to start to build their emergency fund inside of a Roth IRA. Sure, I don't want you pulling out of your Roth IRA too much in terms of an emergency fund, but if it's a way for you to get started and then hopefully, ideally, you kind of almost set it and forget it and you never actually do go to it and it actually really acts like a traditional Roth going forward more than an emergency fund. But the reason why I love this idea is because those contributions are always accessible. Now remember, in this example, you are under the income thresholds and you can save directly to a Roth. If you're watching this video as a physician and you're doing backdoor Roths, it is not that simple. It adds in a five-year rule, it's more complicated, so just move that over to the side. This one's only for minors and Roth IRAs. Set your ideas off to the side for this one. But anytime you put in contributions, so let's just say in this given year, one of my boys puts in $6,500 of their earned income because they helped me around the office and we paid them $6,500 this year. He then takes that money and puts it into his Roth IRA. That $6,500, for however long, even if it grows to 10,000, his initial 6,500 can always be withdrawn. His contribution, no taxes, no penalty. A big win for the Roth IRA, especially if you're starting this very young. Again, here we're talking about minors, kids under the age of 18. Compounding growth, probably the next biggest benefit in here is you have a chance, our kids have a chance, to have a Roth IRA probably decades, right? Decades before we ever had one. I think I was probably in my 20s when I started a Roth IRA for the first time. So they could be starting this six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I mean, heck, go up to 18. They're still well ahead of the curve. So you're getting more time for compounding growth and not just compounding growth in terms of any old account. This is a Roth IRA. So whatever this bad boy compounds to, it's all tax-free. Assuming you, you follow all the rules, qualify withdrawal, especially on the gains, right? That's the, the real important part with Roth IRAs. So compounding interest, start it sooner than later, the most powerful tool in finance, right? There's no magical sauce. It's literally time in the market, it's compounding interest. The next one I wrote down on my list was investing versus a bank account. And this really plays on what I just said in the compounding interest. But I think for a lot of us as parents, we usually are defaulting to, okay, they earned income and we're just gonna keep it in the bank. Now, as I'm recording this video, bank yields aren't that bad. We finally have some decent yields in the bank. 
But even if bank yields are good, long-term, long-duration investing in the market, you should hopefully destroy very much outpace what you're getting in a bank. So I think it's just another way to think of it in terms of, well, you can either keep it at a bank or you could get it invested. Investing in the long term over full market cycles, you know, we're talking 10 years plus here, should be outperforming and hopefully by a good clip. Tax advantages, just coming back to what I said almost earlier, almost exactly in terms of the Roth. So you're getting the compounding interest, but when you go to pull that money out, completely tax free. Again, you got to do qualified withdrawals. You know, you're over the age of 59 and a half. Five year rules are built in there as well. So there's a lot of things that you're keeping an eye on in terms of the gains, right? Contributions, that's the easy part of the equation. But go back to my example for one of my boys. They put in 6,500, it grew to 10,000. 6,500 is easy. It's the other $3,500 of gains that you have to pay attention to. Because if you try to pull all of that out, there will be taxes, there will be penalties there. So that's where you got to be aware of that. And lastly, I put not just a retirement, account. Partially, how I noted earlier, my shout out to Susie Orman, it's really an accessible account in terms of those initial contributions. But you can also take out up to $10,000 for your first home. There's also some unique rules on the actual gains if you're utilizing those for qualified education expenses. More of the story, you still have to pay taxes on the gains, but you don't have the 10% penalty. So while you and I, being much older, do think of them as really retirement accounts, our kids don't have to think of them that way. And it's up to you as the parent on how involved you want your kids to be. With this Roth IRA, I think this is a great opportunity to teach about financial literacy, compounding interest. Um, I think as parents, we always have this one little concern though when we tell them, hey, you have a substantial amount of money. I hope you don't Google it, but technically you have full access to it today because it's your account. So I think there's always that fear with our parents or we're like, when do we tell them? When do we not tell them? How crazy do we get with this? Maybe you start blocking out some names and you're just like, hey, look, it's dad's Roth IRA, but it doesn't have to be treated just like a retirement account. So those are five reasons why you should consider a Roth IRA for your child or for your children. Very popular topic. Those more broad, you know, topics there. On the next section here, I want to get into some more ideas of things that you should really keep an eye on, both good and bad, if this is a strategy that you wanted to put into play. And we'll start to kind of push more towards assuming that you're the business owner compared to if your kids are just employed and they're getting paid. Personally, I think it's a slam dunk and you should be putting money into a Roth. I've even told some of our clients that, you know, think of a matching program. So if your son or daughter made $6,000, let's say $10,000, $10,000 over the summer doing some work, and you bring up this idea of this Roth IRA and and you say, hey, the max you can get into it, let's just say 6,000 for now, even though it's 6,500. It's 6,000. If you put in $3,000 of your hard earned 10,000, I'll also match you 3,000, put it in there. Because remember, from a tax perspective, they had enough to cover that full contribution, right? They had $10,000 of earned income. So they can put in the full 6,000 in this example because they had enough. The IRS doesn't know that it came from mom or dad versus their salary per se. So I think that's a neat way to get them also excited and also kind of real life experience, right? You know, hopefully they have a match someday on a retirement plan. So kind of a neat way to add an extra layer of financial literacy, but also just being proud of our children that they are putting money away because we all know it's a lot more exciting to go spend that money, right? Who the heck wants to invest it and wait 10, 20 years? What compounding interest is that? So just a few ideas there, a few good reasons to really think about getting that Roth IRA fired up for your child or your children. At this phase of the game, say that you have committed to opening a Roth IRA for your child or your children, now what? Well, first and foremost, you gotta go find a custodian. Custodian is just a fancy term for a Vanguard or a Fidelity that allows custodial Roth IRAs. I believe they all do today. Vanguard has it, Fidelity has it. You can easily get it opened up. So that's phase one, right? You gotta go find out where you're gonna open it. Now, again, your child has to have earned income. They have to have earned income. This is one of the ones where people try to cheat it a little bit and they'll just put money into it and no one will find out. But if they do, it's gonna be a mess. You gotta unwind a lot of things. You're gonna have penalties, taxes, it's gonna be a mess. So follow the rules, earned income. Now, how much they can contribute is gonna be a direct correlation to that earned income. If they made $10,000 of earning income, they can't put in 10,000, they can put in the max for that year, which is currently in the year 2023, 6,500. We believe that number will go up a little bit in 2024. 
whatever year you're watching this, Google the current number. Now, if their earned income was 5,000 and the max is 6,500, they can only put in 5,000. Earned income is the key determinant here, right? You have to have that earned income. Now, in terms of planning as if you are the business owner, so you wanna pay your child, and this is where having a good conversation with your accountant, maybe even looking at running the numbers, really there's only two ways to go with it. Are you gonna make them a W-2 salaried employee, which has better benefits in terms of taxes because under the age of 18, we've removed social security tax, we've removed Medicare tax, but also a little bit more complicated, right? You're setting up through the payroll. Most payroll providers, when you add another person, has its own expenses that come with it as well. So there's some moving parts there. Or you could say, I'm gonna pay them as a contractor. You're gonna pay them 1099 pay. Much easier to set up. Technically, there's some more taxes on that side because we have other issues that are gonna come into play here. Ideally, you're trying to always stay below the standard deduction in that current year, again, using 2023 as our guidepost here, 13,850. That doesn't mean you won't file a tax return. You might have a reason that you want to, especially if they were using W-2 and you're trying to get a refund of some nature in there. But for the most part, you're only worried about these two forms of income. One, how your accountant is gonna guide you through it, and then also what's easiest and best for you. But when you do this properly, this is a slam dunk, right? You as the business owner, getting a good tax deduction, probably like 30, 40% taxes as a business owner. It's going to your kids, assuming we're below that 13,850 number, again, 2023 numbers. They're not paying taxes. They're invested into a Roth IRA, which is now getting invested in compounding for decades. Pretty good setup when you do it properly, following all the rules, earned income. And on that earned income topic, let me add one more for you. You have to give reasonable pay reasonable pay. And I chuckle at this one because we have seen and heard some crazy things. But if your child comes up to the office and helps you shred paper and you think you can pay him $30,000 per year, you are going to hate your audit that's coming your way because it's going to be a nightmare. So keep that in mind. Reasonable pay. For me personally, if you're a reader of the Wealth Kill Weekly, I always say my uh, shameless plugs for my kids where I always put pictures of them in there. And one of the things that I like to do is I say I pay them for modeling, right? I take pictures of them. I put them in there. It's a business. Now I know that you know, they're not, I don't even know a male model. I'm just going to say Tom Brady, which <laughs> is not my best example. But, you know, I don't think they're doing any UGG commercials with Tom Brady at this point. Wealth Kill is not that big. We're not that cool. So I know I can pay him maybe a $2,000 like for an entire year, right? Documentation is key. Key. So if you're doing that in my side of it, this makes more sense in 1099, right? Because it's really not a W-2 salary position. And that's the other thing. It's not just a pick or choose W-2 versus 1099 and your accountant will walk you through this. But you know, if it is consistent work, they likely should be W-2. But if it's miscellaneous here or there, 1099 contractor pay would make more sense. But my theory there is that on the contractor pay, I'm tracking what weeklies we put them in, how many pictures we use of them, trying to use a fair rate, trying to look up, you know, what are kid modeling rates per se, and then using that in there. But even when I do all that calculation, I document everything, we're still talking, you know, $1,000, $2,000 per year per child at best. So that's the type of documentation you should be doing. Your accountant will walk you through it a lot better than what I am. You should always walk through these topics with your accountant, but that's another one. You gotta make sure, you know, not only is it earned income, it's reasonable earned income. Contribution limits, we hit there. Always following in there based on earned income or the actual contribution limits. Document everything. The pay should be reasonable. The work type will then decipher too. Is it W-2 or 1099? Let's see here. I put a lot of notes for this topic because this is a popular one. Under 18, we covered, we hit the standard deduction. So really those are the main things. And I know I noted it earlier in there too, but don't forget it is their account. They have control of it. Whenever they find out, hopefully our kids are making good decisions. Hopefully we're good stewards as parents and we're leading them in the right direction and they'll never touch it, right? They're just gonna let it ride. And then someday when they're much older and probably we're long gone and hopefully great grandparents or great, great, great grandparents by that point, you know, then maybe they'll look to get into it. And it's gonna be a much larger number because it just had compounding interest for decades upon decades upon decades and completely tax-free, but remember, it is their funds. And if that's something that concerns you, there are other ways to get money invested for your kids. There's UTMA and UGMA accounts. I mean, you could even keep it simple and putting money into a joint account in your names. Now, if that's their earned income, I wouldn't do it that way, but just more or less some other ideas for getting money invested for our children. So those are some really important things to keep in mind. You should even look into like a bank account for minors. Capital One has a great bank account for minors. When I say this because whether you're paying them W-2 or 1099, if you're trying to keep this very official, 
you know, let's use Wealth Keel as an example. So Wealth Keel pays 1099. My oldest son, his name is Riker. We pay 1099 income to Riker. It goes into Riker's Capital One checking account. The money builds up there for the year, whether it's a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, a thousand here. And then when the time is right, we'll then use that to fund his Roth IRA for that given year. So it's a really clean system. We're documenting everything along the way. A business bank account goes into my child's bank account, goes into his Roth IRA. Very organized steps. So not saying that's the perfect way to do it. Your accountant will probably give you a completely different way and say, that guy's crazy, but it works for us, works for our accountant, most importantly. So that's how we have our setup. So Roth IRA for kids, fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic idea. Make sure it fits your situation. I can say it's great and shout it from the rooftop. It still needs to fit your situation. Most importantly, again, following all the rules, following all the rules. But if you haven't, or if you are thinking about it, I hope this gives you plenty of context on getting that Roth IRA fired up for your children or your child. And there you have it. Opening a custodial Roth IRA for your child or children. Really the main takeaway here is that the pros very much outweigh the cons. It is a really good idea, lots of benefits that come with it. However, it still needs to make sense for your situation in particular, and you need to follow all the rules. Most importantly, having earned income, making sure that income is reasonable, especially if you are the business owner making that pay. If they're getting W-2 income or 1099 income from somewhere else, that's not your fight to fight, so you're okay there. And you can continue to make those contributions to the Roth IRA. But if you are the business owner in particular, make sure you're following all the rules, keeping things organized, a good process in place. But Roth IRAs for our children is a really good thing to at least put on your radar, if not maybe even put into play. So as always, thanks for hanging out with me for the last 15 minutes or so. If you have not subscribed, what are you doing? You can subscribe here. You click on this little bell icon. You also get a notification every time we're releasing a new video like this one. So again, thanks for hanging out with me and I will catch you on the next video.